coming in with an update. As y'all saw this morning, I did a Bible study and we'll do some updates on that here in a minute. But it is Saturday and I want to do just a quick little vlog. I don't know how long this will be, but the hubs and I are going to take a trip to, uh, with our kid too, <laughs> but we're going to go to Nashville. There's this um, Christian Publishers Outlet. I've been there before. Actually, I went to the one in Murfreesboro before in the one of my vlogs, but we're gonna go to the one in Nashville. It's actually the place I met Alicia at For the Love of Christian Fiction. So I've been there before. I don't know that I really vlogged there. So yeah, it's the same type setup as the one I went to in Nashville where it's like this huge Christian outlet store. It's awesome, has really great prices, but that's what I wanna do today. <laughs> so it's like 90 degrees here. So summer is in full force. So I'm just saying, I wanna give y'all a quick reading update. I am 80% in on Fortress of Snow. I'm really enjoying this. I'm probably gonna give it four stars. It is a Snow Queen reimagining. I don't know that it's a retelling exactly, but it is very similar. And this is all about, now I need to look at the names cause you know, your girl. Um, they call her Maisie, M-A-Z-Y, but Maisalina. <laughs> of Wexcomb. <laughs> so this is set in like the 1300s. And so she's kind of always dreamed of traveling around with her father to these different lands and all this stuff. And all of a sudden his, he dies. It has pretty much just destroyed her whole future plans with him and all these things and their travels. And then her brother abandons her and says he isn't gonna have anything to do with her anymore. So she's forced to pretty much leave and go seek help from her other brother, John, at this other place. And there she meets this guy, Sir Beringer of Derricot. And you see some characters from the previous stories, uh, like Lady Delia, we see her a little bit, but uh, I, it's probably best, of course, that you read it in order. But I don't know that it'd be a big deal if you read this on, uh, off by itself. You know, she meets this guy, Sir Beringer, and they are the romantic interests, <laughs> okay? So he has like this um, very like protective instincts of her and you know, uh, all these things. And she's 16 when he, they first meet and then he has to go away for a while. And then he ends up coming back two years later and she's 18 of course at this time. And so they meet again on the streets of London where she is making like a living selling different goods in this market, like baking bread and all this stuff. However, in the meantime, he is called away by the king where he has to get a reward for his service. And this recognition though comes with this price where he has to marry this lady who is crazy by the way. Um, she's like this wealthy titled widow and there's some rumors about her that everybody's like what is going on so he's kind of like gone off with her to get to know her and Maisie starts hearing about the rumors and like wants to go and try to tell him all about it and you start to realize soon that this woman's nuts and like we need things to be revealed so he doesn't try to really marry her but he starts to kind of see her treachery as well and all the things so the whole thing of her going to her brothers to try to get his help. Sir John is his name. The, both brothers really aren't that helpful for her. And so she just has to like go on her own and do her own thing. What's really cool about her that I like is she's like this, this might be the reimagining part, but she is really brave and she can defend herself, honey. She throws these knives. Like she's really good at like knife throwing and archery and all this stuff. The part where she like throws a knife and, get, and gets somebody in the arm. Like that's probably more of like the reimagining vibe because I don't know much about the Snow Queen, but I'm thinking of like Frozen, the movie Frozen, where she like has the ice and she like throws ice and it can hurt you. <laughs> it's like, I don't like what they're doing here. I don't know. But anyway, either way, I am really enjoying this story. It's very castle, you know, Regency vibe here and, you know, kings and queens and all these things and in during this time period. Um, but I'm, eight, like I said, I'm 80% in and we're at like this, pretty much where things are starting to get revealed. And I'm really interested to read the next one, which I have on my net galley. And it is like a Red Riding Hood retelling or reimagining or something like that. So love that cover. I'm gonna put it here. Look at this cover. The red, like the cloak, all the things looks so good. So yeah. Um, also, this cover is one of my favorites because it's all purple. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, there's that. And then, did some Bible reading and everything. Um, the reason I didn't go over that first because I had this sitting on that. So, um, got my notes here. And as y'all saw in the Bible reading, we were reading, well, I was reading, um, Joshua 2, not 2, Joshua 3 and 4. And so yesterday, last night, I read Joshua 2 where... Joshua sends men to view the land at Jericho and they see Rahab. And so, she, you know, Rahab was a prostitute and she, you know, did God's work here. She had faith in him and hid them, led them down this rope through her window. They give her this scarlet cord in her window so that when they come to 
uh, fight at Jericho and take over it that they would know that she is the one that helped and everything. And so, you know, she's just very sympathetic for them and, and her faith really includes her in God's chosen people. And like I was reading one of my studies that they said that Rahab is God's promise to Abraham coming true, right? You know, she is this hero of faith and she's this um, branch in Jesus's family tree here that, you know, really helped take over the land, the, their land. And so one thing I'll read to y'all, if a prostitute on the wrong side of God's battle line can become a member of God's family, so can we. I love that. And so then I read Joshua three and four this morning. And so this is when Israel is crossing the Jordan. And I just love this part. The Lord's doing wonders among them. Uh, it says that the Lord will do wonders among you. He was with Joshua. All Israel was able to pass over the Jordan, just like Moses in the Red Sea moment, because God uh, parted that and helped them to cross over into their into their lands. My favorite part of this is the memorial stones where they lay them down as a memorial and it shall be like a memory to all of those, all of the people of Israel really, a memorial forever that on the on this day, on that day, the Lord exalted Joshua inside of all Israel and they stood in awe just as with Moses. And so this is like the moment that they realize that Joshua is God's chosen person to continue on after Moses, right? It was just that memory. These stones are a memorial to remember that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan so you could cross over. And so my favorite part, like y'all can see in the clips is I said, the, the hand of the Lord is mighty that you may fear the Lord your God forever. And I just, I love that part. One of the notes here I had wrote down after that was uh, I did the spoken gospel study. I will leave this link down below for Joshua. They have some videos on it and I really like it because they tie in Jesus here. You know, the first part of this is, you know, Joshua is always compared to Moses as a servant of the Lord. He has the same spirit of wisdom. You know, this is very similar to the day that Moses led them out of Egypt, the Red Sea, and then the Jordan. And so he went, but the difference is he went where Moses couldn't, right? He was in the promised land and God chose him as his chosen servant. And so Joshua is clearly God's chosen successor here. But in the gospel, I've never even thought about this. So that shows how like little I know about things, but um, they talked about how Jesus is literally a new Joshua who brings us into his promised land and establishes the kingdom of God by his death. Mic drop. Like I never even thought about that. Since Joshua obeyed God and walked into the Jordan, Jesus did too as a sign of obedience as well. Instead of the river parting, the sky breaks open and the Holy Spirit rests on Jesus like a dove, the way the spirit of wisdom filled Joshua. Never made that correlation. So I just wanted to share that those comments with you guys and you know my notes here leave here in a minute and I'll do some vlogging while we're gone. I'll show you all the books I get. And uh one funny thing I do want to share with you guys. It's funny, but it's really not funny. It's a true moment of conviction that I want to share with you all. And you will see in some of my coming up videos me kind of going back and forth and saying, dare I say that I will do this, right? I have taken all of my Outlander books off my shelves <laughs> and replaced them with Christian fiction. And the reason for that, while there are things that we can enjoy that may have explicit content, right? There are some, sometimes things that are convicting, right? As, as believers, we have times that things are convicting. And I felt the Lord just really telling me, you know what you need to do with this. I have been battling back and forth about those books for probably a month and you can kind of tell in like the upcoming videos that you'll see this week um like my book buzzwords and anti-buzzwords as i started even talking about it i'm like <laughs> you know there's this little nudge that i kind of could tell that i was feeling you know it's almost like trying to justify something and you know i read mostly clean books now and just try to read things that are more glorifying to the Lord. And just to let you all know too, like content in books and things like that. And Outlander is the only thing I really kept. And I still may do a reread from a Christian perspective at some point, but there, I don't know if I will. I really don't know. But I decided to take them off my shelves because I felt the Lord saying, you, you know, you need to. And whatever the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you is the how it is. So, um, you know, whatever he says. <laughs> so I took them off my shelves. I moved them. I didn't have room in my closet. So I just, I moved them somewhere else, but they're not anywhere on a bookshelf. They're just sitting somewhere off to the side. And 
yeah i mean as far as the show um i think i'll try to watch the show and see what they they do and i'll probably skip some scenes to be honest with y'all because i just feel convicted about it it's very explicit there are things that i just don't love about it anymore and i feel like the lord is telling me to let it go and so this is me telling y'all <laughs> the progress that i have made in this i think that whenever we feel like those convicting moments it shows how the lord's really working on us and how we are growing in faith and you know i can't tell no, no one can tell you what you should and shouldn't read or watch or anything that is all personal convictions and discernment and you know i, I mentioned some of those things and it's like as i started talking about some of the content in the book i'm like well <laughs> you know what i'm saying so and i just felt that nudge and almost like a light I don't know how to explain it. It's just conviction is what it is. And so I still love Jamie and Claire and their story, but there's no need for a lot of the, a lot of the things in there. And I think even after reading When the Day Comes by Gabrielle Meyer, the way I saw her do a story that reminded me of Jamie and Claire in a way, the time travel and just with faith content it was done so well and i'm like there's no need for what we've done here in this outlander stuff so yeah i just wanted to share that with you guys and i hope that um maybe that's encouragement to you to kind of <laughs> pray about things that you are struggling with as well when it comes to discernment or books or anything like that or movies i know that that can be a tough topic and everybody's different so but anyway uh i'm gonna bounce because people are outside my neighbors are outside and i need i, I need to uh, you know <laughs> but i'll update y'all here in a while hey y'all we are at this christian publishers outlet so i'll vlog a little bit when i go in here but kids in the back we just took a drive to nashville about an hour and 15 minutes to get here this is like way out here but <laughs> we're here and blake had to go in here real quick because he had to pee <laughs> super bad so <laughs> but hey so I might not have to get back and then I'm gonna go in while he sits in the car with a little man. That's the best way. And so I won't take too long in there, but I kind of have my eye on some biblical fiction, okay? I think I'm gonna get maybe some me Sue Andrews and Tessa Afshar. Really looking for a Tessa Afshar's In the Fields of Grace or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's her um, biblical fiction about Ruth. I need it. I need it. I need it. So yeah, and anything else I want to get, I'll get. So
All right, I got this shirt. Isn't that cute? Be still and know that he is God. Yes, ma'am. $10. Uh-oh. Not good. We may have this happen quite a bit. $10. Don't work. <laughs> the phone will keep falling, so. I have book three on my net galley that I need to still read from last year on this. I've never read anything by Grace Hitchcock, but I got book one, which is My Dear Mr. Pree, the American Royalty Series, $6. And then this one was three dollars. It was book two, and so her darling, Mr. Day. So got these. Lee Sue Andrews in the Shadow of Jezebel. Biblical fiction. Princess Jess. I don't even know what the names are, but we're just gonna go on with this biblical fiction. Not get everyone else these names. Moving on. I got Kimberly Woodhouse. This was three ninety eight. I've really wanted to been reading read this author. Uh, she's historical fiction, so published by Bethany House. I think I always gravitate to Bethany House. I don't know what it is, but anyway. Kimberly Woodhouse, Secrets of the Canyon, book one, A Deep Divide. So, love this cover. And I, I don't know what they're all about, but hey, I'm just showing them. <laughs> Let me know if you've read them. This one is Christian Hunter. This is, I don't think this is book, this might be book three or something. Two or three, I think these are books two and three. In the hearts of the hearth, Heath. I can't say nothing. Anyway, um, Winning the Gentleman and Enchanting the Heiress. I need book one, I think. I don't think these are book one. Anyway, uh, this is $2 and then this is $4. So, yeah, Christian Hunter. So, he didn't have that one series I wanted to read. So, but that's okay. All right, so there's that. And then we've got some Tracy. Going the right way. I hope you know where you're going. <laughs> Tracy Peterson. This was two ninety eight. This is again. This is book three, Bridgestone Bride series. What comes my way? Trace Peterson. Did I say that? I don't know. Uh, I'm saying Crimson Cord by uh, this Rahab Story. Oh yeah. Hey, we'd love to see it. Jill Eileen Smith. Biblical fiction, six dollars. Well, my friends said that was good, so I got it. They didn't have much other biblical fiction there, so I took to get it somewhere else. I wanted to look for that Tessa Afshar Ruth book, but they didn't have it. Um, Across the Blue by Carrie Turan, Tur Turansky, Turansky. Um, this was $2. J Jeanette over at Jane Reads recently read this, so hey girl, I had to pick it up. She did a vlog for it and I really enjoyed that vlog, so yeah, I had to pick this up. It's like, um, you know, got some pilots and stuff. Like number two, they give you like a trash bag. Yeah, I know, it's like a black bag. <laughs> like black trash bag. <laughs> okay, where am I at? <laughs> Okay, and then, hold on, all right, The Element of Love by Mary Connolly. This is book one, they had book one, in the Lumber Baron's Daughter series. Bethany House, historical romance. The Dazzle of Diamonds, Liz Johnson. I had book one, this is book three. What? Like they were loading up a mattress. <laughs> okay, book three, Liz Johnson, A Dazzle of Diamonds, in the Georgia Coast series. I had book one, recently got it for like 99 cents. So, yeah. And then, I don't even know what I'm bringing, I'm pulling out here. Hold on. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, Jocelyn Green, I have book one, but I don't have two or three in this series. So, Drawn by the Current and Shadow of the White City. This is um, the other two books in the Windy City Saga series. So, two and three. Two is the, the White City one, and then three is Dawn, of, by, Dawn by the Current. Did I say that right? I don't know if I did. Anyway, Dawn by the Current. So yeah, Bethany House, and these are historical. Yeah, another Mary Connolly. This was book two in the Lumber Baron's Daughters series. Yeah, time to read all these. It's a lot of books. Why are you roasting me now? It's a lot of books. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. Anyway, um, are these all romance or kind of just the... some are historical, biblical fiction, all that. Okay. Um, anyway, look, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> we're struggling. Book two in the Sugar Baron's Daughter, not Sugar Baron, what am I saying? The Lumber Baron's Daughter, Inventions of the Heart, Mary Connolly. I never read anything about her either. Six dollars. Do you know where you're at? I mean, I'm trying to get to Briley. Okay. Um, oh yeah, and then I also got another one of these, Tracy Peterson. These look so fun, these westerns. I'm here, I need to get book one, but these were only like six dollars. This is Wherever You Go, book two in the Brookstone Bride series, so I have to get the other book one and then the sweet life by suzanne woods fisher oh, this is only four dollars so 
Sweet Life. And I think this is a contemporary romance. I don't know if I'd like Suzanne Woods Fisher, but I want to give her a try. I think I've got another one of her books, so yeah, that's what. Going on yeah, I am. I hope you know where you're going. We were in a sketch part of town, so lock the doors. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. This is not. Mm -mm. Look at all these guys looking at us. I would have. Sketchy part. Yeah, just it's like sketch. Um, yes. Did I show all the books? I think I did. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, <laughs> yeah, I did. So those are all the books I got. And then, let's see. I got lots of notebooks and stuff. Phone bell again. Okay. Uh, I'm really trying to make this happen, so I don't have to do this at the house. It's a lot better doing here. Um. Anyway, I got a lot of these like three dollar notebooks. I think these would be wonderful gifts to just throw in when you like packing up. Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, anything like Why that. Why are you showing them off? There's a gifts. I'm not showing them every single one, but they're these, they're just like these little. Vanna can't help herself. She's these like, little hey, cute notebooks. Look to I love these. these for prayer notebooks. They're really short pages. Like there's only 64 pages, but these, this like, this feeling, it's really nice for a prayer notebook. So I got a ton of them, okay? All right, and then the last two journals I got, this one is just cute little faith, hope, love. Is that one for you? Yep, not that I needed it. And this one uh, was clearance out. Oh, I like that purple. Yeah, yeah. Chrissy, purple. Oh yeah. <laughs> for I know the plans I have for you to place the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. <laughs> Are we going in the Manda's purple library? No, I don't have purple library. It's Chrissy. I know Manda's got. What is your library called? Book lover Manda. That's not a color. Manda's. Hubs. What do you like? Pink. Manda's pink library. <laughs> the hub just roasted me. Get out of here. I mean, we these, um, anytime I go to these Christian bookstores, I get these because you really can't find them anywhere but Christian bookstores. So I got a ton of them. I got sick of like running out of them. But I, I get these little bookmarks. It's a pack of 10. They're the teacher's bookmarks for like supply stuff, but they're only $3. So you get 10 of these bookmarks for three bucks. I always put these in um, like when I send out a package of books that I bought on my Pango store or if I just have like a gift yes, for somebody. Um, so, yeah, I just, I got a bunch of these, and I, um, this one was so cute. I love this one. Anyway, that's the haul. That's what we got. Blake was good. I hope I didn't miss nothing. I think I got everything, so. That's it for now. So coming in with an update, I did finish reading Fortress of Snow by Melanie Dickerson. I'm going to give it four stars. It ended really well. It had, you know, that same type of romance that's kind of been throughout this series. So, yeah. <laughs> but it's still cute. The general, I guess the general setup of these books are somebody's trying to marry off the girl. She don't want to get married with nobody. And... There's a guy and they kind of hit it off and things maybe happen that either separate them apart and they come back together at some point. There's usually a villain in the story that I always think that um, Melanie Dickerson writes villains well. My favorite in the series is still number two, but uh, there's usually a villain in the story and yeah, I mean, they're trying to pretty much rectify the situation throughout the whole time and then <laughs> and then they fall in love they love each other really fast and yeah that's usually how these all of this every book in this whole series is set up and you know it's it's a good time you kind of know what you're going to get by the end of the book but they're just fun YA fiction reads you know and they're retelling so this probably wasn't my favorite retelling just because I don't know enough about the Snow Queen but if you know a lot about it you probably would pick up on more than I did so 
yeah, four out of five stars, 3.75, 3.5, four, whatever. I'm gonna put four on Goodreads, but still had a good time with this and first book of June is done. So with that being said, y'all seen I was on some reading sprints, honey. So watching some reading sprints here on I am Paximus, his channel. And he is always chatting in the live chat on Read for the Skies reading sprints whenever she gets to do them. And he and her are doing a Mistborn readathon read along this month. So if you're looking to read Mistborn, which you know I still need to read it, but I'm not committing this month just because reasons. <laughs> I still need to find my commitment. I've had commitment issues, but I had the whole trilogy. I even brought it out and thought I was about to read it during this, but. I was like, eh, I'll just kind of mood read. You know, I got to be in the mood for it. It's a long read. So, yeah. Um, but with that said, they are doing that. So, if you're not following Paximus, I will leave his channel down below. It is really great. Like, his whole setup is awesome. The aesthetic, the music, it was a whole vibe. I love it. And he does a lot of reading sprints. So, if you're looking for reading sprints that are fun, definitely check his out. And uh, Sky also does some as well sometimes whenever she gets a chance. So she'll be doing some, I think, as well this month for this little readathon from what they were saying, or it may be on his channel. But yeah, definitely check out his channel so you can catch up with Sky whenever she's on there and all the good things. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, vlog. Honestly, I'm gonna end it here. It's just a Saturday vlog. We had like 30 something minutes of content here. Um, I am gonna continue on reading Joshua tomorrow. And I, you, you might have seen, I had this book out here, Anne Voskamp, and I've never read anything by her, but Oshina read this and really enjoyed it. And I'm just really needing some good Christian nonfiction this month. I'm going to dive into this a little bit next, and um, I'm going to take it slow. I'm not going to like rush into it because I read Christian nonfiction pretty slow. So there's all that stuff. But just, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. The hubs was roasting me as usual, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> we had a good time today just getting out and going to Nashville and all the good things. So um, I am also working through, uh, by the way, this uh, You're Gonna Make It devotional that Sky got me um, for my birthday. And so, yeah, I've only done a couple of days because uh, me, you girl and her track record with devotionals is like, so I'm really trying to just keep it out so I remember to pick it up and do something with it. So yeah, and I will tell y'all, this is the notebook I've been keeping notes. I'm gonna start keeping notes in for my reading. I have to keep notes sometimes with things. So, you know, I wrote down some notes about Forest of Snow, uh, Forest, <laughs> Fortress of Snow. <laughs> Moving on. So, yeah, anyway, <laughs> I feel like I've talked enough. I hope that you all have a great weekend, and there'll be some videos come out this week. Like I said, I did say some stuff about the Outlander, you know, here and there. So, just know that I was kind of going through, you know, discernment. <laughs> I don't know what to say, but, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's already been filmed. I'm not deleting the video and redoing it, so we're just moving on. But things have kind of escalated since then and transformed. My heart's been a little bit more transformed since then. And, um, yeah, I still, I still feel pretty convicted about it. So, yeah, I'm just going to let the Lord lead me in all things. So, as usual. Editing Amanda here. I really want to do a quick shelf update since I got these new books. And since I did take the Outlander books off my shelf, let me just show you guys kind of what I got going on here. I found... That monitor's unplugged, so if you're beeping. Anyway, I have to fix that. But I have found that if I stack the books, <laughs> then it's a little bit better. You'll see. You get more room. I don't always love the aesthetic of it, but... Let me show you. All right, so just a quick overview of the, of the shelf update here. I still don't, I'm not fully done here, but you know, just overview. We've still got like the Lord of the Rings books up here. You know, I put my Harry Potter stuff, some classics, classic shelf with the Anna Green Gables cookbook and all the things. Then I moved all my, <laughs> y'all were like, Amanda, you ain't got no space. Anyway, um, yeah, all the cozies are up top. It is what it is. And then I've got this Book of the Month shelf. Y'all, right here, this quick overview, but this Book of the Month shelf, I've got to focus on this because this could free up a lot of space for paperbacks. And I'm going to be honest with y'all, these are all secular. I've only read these two, The Bodyguard and Spinning Silver, and I really don't know. I think that's it. Let me see. Yeah. I really don't know if I'm going to love any of these. They're secular. I don't know content, all the things. So we're just going to go with it. But this will be a priority at some point, I think, to try to like save some space. I just don't know when. But anyway, yeah, there's the book of the month. And then down here, I need to move this. It is not spring anymore, Amanda. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so 
this is um you can see i've added some stickers you know all the good things here we've got all christian fiction here i really wanted like this top shelf to be the horizontal stack versus like these are the vertical stack because when i'm filming you see this mostly anyway so it is what it is but um yeah so i've got all my christian fiction here uh put out a lot, so, a lot of jamie joe right i'm telling y'all i gotta get through some jamie joe right look at this so anyway there's that and then down here is chaos okay there's really no organization but i have just stacked a lot of the books more christian fiction here that you can see and then down here we have got even more Christian fiction and stacked. You can usually get like two good stacks, vertical, and then have some at the end here. And then at the very bottom, we've got some space. So there's like the selection series and Left Behind and some Melanie Dickerson. Like everything's kind of mixed in here down here. Okay, middle grade a little bit. So yeah, then I've got a whole section on my... Um, Christian nonfiction shelf at, down here. I really would like to do another bookshelf tour, but you know, maybe that'll be, um, again for vlogmas, I'll do one. You know, I did one last year with all the books and said what books I had and stuff. Uh, of course I added some more of the books here, changed this up. A lot of the biblical fiction is here, romantic suspense, all that stuff, just all Christian fiction. And then the Francine River shelf pretty much stays the same. I've got to read more Francine, honey. It is sad. I have like all her books and I even read them all. Okay. But hey, we're here. I've read at least four out of these. So yeah, I'll get to it. And then, um, more, uh, I have actually read, I think all of these except this one. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. I read all of these except for the second book in the Connelly cassette series here. So yeah, uh, there's that. And then, you know, we've got some Fanta fantasy shelf and all the things and then secular fantasy, all that stuff. And, uh, Christian romance again was a, Catherine Center's in here. She's secular romance, but still, the rest of this is Christian romance. And you'll see here, uh, I got some pictures of my besties. Uh, I got Amy this card, and you can do it on Postable if you've never heard of this. But you can go on Postable.com, and it's like three or four dollars. You can create a a design, which I did my design on Canva, which is why I do all my thumbnails and stuff. But yeah, um, this was cool because. Uh, I could just make the design on Canva and make a card. And so it's like a postcard. So I sent this to her, just thanking her for coming up. And I loved how it turned out. So yeah, I sent myself one too, because I wanted to have the same thing on my bookshelf and she's got it on hers. And so then I also printed out one of me and Alicia and I sent her the same, the same thing in the mail. So, so she can have one as well. Anyway, <laughs> book friends, we love it. So, um, but yeah, down, then down here, this is where the Outlander books used to be. And look how much space. I mean, wow these books have just freed up so much space because they were hardcovers all of this is christian fiction and part of it uh, the reason part of the reason i wanted to also take them off is like i feel like in my videos promotion wise like i'm promoting those books and i just don't feel good about that anymore and so for me it's like i'm here i want to promote the christian fiction the good reads the good clean reads and it's just it's something that i have been very convicted on and yeah i'm being very transparent with you guys like that's just the, the way it, i feel about it now and you know like i said i may read them again at some point from a christian perspective but probably not we've got a whole section on secular fiction inheritance games lemon gelato uh random others as well um you know sarah adams that kind of stuff and then in here at the very bottom we got the twilight box set some sherlock holmes other secular books, Robin Hobb, uh, and then just some randoms mixed in. So, yeah, then I've still got my TBR cart sitting over here. <laughs> I about fell. I got my TBR cart sitting here. There's kids' toy. But yeah, I feel like I've really, just as a whole, made some progress with things. I still don't love this up here with the cozy mysteries, but this is kind of the shelf update for now i wanted to give that to y'all because i know that some people would have been interested in this so you may not even be interested in this but it's the shelf update for now back to the video hope you all enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on my next video bye y'all